Man, you guys, welcome in. What a beautiful, wondrous morning it is. Ah, standing here in Ronan, Montana. Got the mountains to the west. Whew, Idaho. We got mountains to the east. Sun breaking up over the top. That would be towards Nebraska. We got blue three just sitting there. We got blue four sitting there. Man of oh man, man of oh man, what a good old day. I slept like eight hours last night, 10 hours, 12 hours. No, slept for about eight hours and just feel like a hundred dollar bill. One hundred dollar bill. <laughs> Yo, whew. Hope you guys are feeling good as well, wherever you may be this fine morning. So uh, today's episode, we've got some different things going on. Uh, last, last, round, last round we did was with uh, old Tuna. Sorry Tuna, I do this. Old Tuna. We've teased about each other's height. Well, he doesn't tease about my height. <laughs> I've teased him about his height since forever, so I apologize, sort of. Anyway, anyhow, today, this is what's different today, you guys. Uh, we're here at a regular old, old, this is again another place I mentioned in the last video, the old country. This would be a similar place, the old country. Uh, back in the day, just a quick recap of agriculture in the United States, back in the day, there was just tons and tons and tons of smaller acreages. Uh, as time has gone on, small farms, small ranches have been bought up by bigger outfits, um, wealthy out-of-state entities and whatnot, and they consolidate these smaller properties into bigger ranches. Um, this is how all the shipping used to happen back in the day. Back when I was young, uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, this is, this is the bulk of what went on, okay? And I'll explain it as we go. Uh, just giving you again some background, um, but as time's gone on, it's it's much more rare to see this style of shipping going on. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through that today. Uh, the other uh, the other surprise is this guy right here. Uh, that's my good buddy Matt Swan, who I'll introduce you to here when uh, when we get going. This is his first time ever hauling cattle. He does more of this stuff. He's a heavy equipment dirt guy. Hauls lots of big stuff. Uh, We've been friends for, for quite a few years now, and he expressed a little interest in coming out and doing a little he uh, heavy hauling in the cattle world. And so uh, this is gonna be his first trip ever. He's, he's grown up around cattle, been around cattle, but he's never hauled one in his life. So, who better to learn how to haul cattle from than the actual master himself? Eh? <laughs> okay, so let's first explain what's going on here. You're seeing a lot of these seeing a lot of these trailers, right? You got big trucks on one side over here and you've got lots of, we call them horse trailers. Everyone just calls them horse trailers even though they use to haul cattle. We always refer to them as horse trailers. So you got a bunch of horse trailers rolling in. Lots, see look them all stacked back there. Hey looky there, we'll introduce him in a minute. <laughs> so you've got, you've got these guys bringing cattle in. Here's another trailer getting offloaded as we speak. These guys just pulled in. See those cattle running out? Beautiful thing. There they go. Okay, now we're kind of up on a high spot where you can see a little bit of what's going on. So back here you've got a lot of different pens. This is a big, uh, this corral is actually operated by the local FFA high school chapter. They maintain it. Uh, it's kind of a fundraiser deal for them. The, uh, the producers pay to come ship out of here. And uh, you hear the cattle. Anyhow, so what's happening, these, on the right side of the parking lot over here, these are all producers, okay? Their producers are scattered out throughout the countryside. From mountain, mountain ranges on the left to mountains on the right, it's a big, beautiful valley, okay? Uh, if you're slightly familiar with Montana, uh, you may have heard of flatbed, flat head, excuse me, not flatbed, thinking too much about trucks. 
Flathead Lake would be straight north of us. Kalispell, Whitefish, all of that fancy folk place is way uh, another hour and a half to the north of here, okay? So anyhow, these are small... <clears throat> These are smaller producers out here, and when it comes time to be shipping day, the producers gather their cattle up out in the country on their respective properties. They separate the, uh, the calves from their mamas, time for the calves to go to college, time for the mamas to get a break, and they bring them into a central location. Now, just a little while ago, I mentioned that this is how we used to always do it. Uh, growing up, we had one of these, still do, I guess, technically. Uh, where we grew up, we had a shipping corral like this. And at our place, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays in the fall, all the local farmers would bring their cattle into our place. We had pens and corrals, and most importantly, we had a certified scale. And so they'd all bring in, each one of them had 20, maybe 30, uh, you know, head of, head of livestock to bring in. And we'd receive them all, we'd weigh them, sort them, uh, and get them basically grouped together and then loaded on trucks to head back east. So that's how, that's really how most of it went back before the smaller properties had gotten bought up. It's really fun to come back here each year to uh, Western Montana and get to see how it's still like it, it was back then. Um, a lot of, a lot of feedlots nowadays, if they can't buy a whole straight semi load from one ranch, they're like, ah, we don't, you know, we're not interested. We want just one ranch cattle. But uh, the cool little niche about this is that uh, the particular buyer we're hauling for uh, out in Nebraska, they're happy with putting, it's called putting together loads, where uh, Matt and I are each gonna have probably four different owners on our loads. Um, and the feedlot's cool with that. They know that they're good cattle that are produced out here in Montana and they'll be fine. They don't all have to be from the same ranch, right? So I'll show you. So in here, <clears throat> this is the scale house, right? So through the window there, the cattle come in. They weigh about, probably about 12 at a time in there. You can see some. They weigh them, moving them off. Scales here, keep a tally. This guy right here, I say, has the most stressful job of the day. So I've been telling everybody how this is like the old country and it's old school and all the older corrals and the, the you know the, the co-op of all this. And then Lloyd drags me over and says, you see my cattle buyer computer? <laughs> hey, that's fancy. When did you embrace technology? I've been using that computer a while. Have you? But I finally bought the generator a couple years ago so I could use it here because there's no power. Isn't that, huh? But like at Kurtz and Mission and Hot Springs, sets it up right there. So, uh, yeah. I've been saying that you have the most precarious job today. Because I do? you're, I think so. Okay. Because you're in between everybody, right? Right. Explain that just a little bit. Well, you got to, these are our friends. We, we be with these guys all the time. We got to take care of them and make sure they bring good cattle and we want to not cut back something that they're going to be upset about but then on the other end when they get to the feedlot the guy back there is going to look at him and think why did he send that calf so you got to balance that because if i don't have the buyer in the feedlot i don't have customers in the country and so it's yeah. a that's why i say you're, you're in the line. middle you're the guy yeah. that you have the answer to everybody so. my hardest thing today is the amount of money we'll go through yeah it's just unbelievable what the prices of cattle and i'm real happy for the people but it's a lot of money it's a lot of transaction in there yeah. it is yeah so what Lloyd's saying is really no joke. So if, if you're, I'll kind of explain that just a little more. He's, he's basically the liaison between his friends, his neighbors, this community, uh, Lloyd and his dad, uh, his dad's been buying cattle since forever. So these are all old time friends, right? Uh, people they've done business with forever and ever. And so each year, Lloyd being the middleman as the cattle buyer or broker, He's got to call his feedlots back east and say, hey, what are you offering for cattle this year? Because most of these people want to, they want to lock up these contracts and sell their cattle kind of mid to late summer, late summer. Uh, so they say, hey, we're going to give this much per pound for steers, this much per pound for heifers. Go see what you can do. So then Lloyd turns around, comes out here to, to the folks, to, you know, to the good old people of the old country, and he has to 
say, all right, this is, this is what they're offering. What do you say? And, and some of them say, you know what? That's a good price. Let's do it. Some of them say, ah, we're going to hold out and see. I think, I think we're going to get some better offers as the time rolls on. And sometimes the cattle buyers, you know, Lloyd will report and say, I got a few bought. A lot of people think it's too cheap. So the cattle buyers may adjust their price and say, well, you can give five cents more a pound. Or they might say, that's it. That's where we're at this year. And so it, it just, it depends. So then when shipping day comes, you guys have to remember, this is their this is their livelihood. This is where they're getting the whole year's worth of, you know, running cattle and doing the deal. It's all boiling down to today. So it's a beautiful morning out here. It is, isn't it? It is. Man, it's, a, it's a beautiful day for your first. We're gonna, we're gonna learn a lot today. <laughs> you ain't kidding. Look at this guy work. Whew, he's getting her figured out. So for you guys wondering, we're in the nose. This is the, this is the front compartment of this cow trailer. And these front compartments are cool in the way that they have a removable, a removable floor. Uh, so we're putting that, that, we call it decking. We're putting that decking in right now. Uh, Matt's learning is... <laughs> I ran out of room here. <laughs> His, uh, decking is very screechy and loud, but... Uh, getting his first lesson on putting decking in because these cattle will be small enough that we can double stack them. We'll double stack this front compartment. Big cows, you can't, you can't deck big cows. <laughs> totally. First time is very tricky if you've never backed in a cow trailer before. Very trickiness. Hey, looky there. I think we're gonna count that as a wonderful success. How was that? Well, was that close? Close enough? Looky, and stick your head in there, take a peek. Oh buddy, I'm gonna say that's a total success. There's a little there's, there's a little a gap little... on the far side, but yeah. not where the cattle get into the trailer. They don't climb in over there, so. You got room for improvement there. I mean, maybe a tiny bit, but. <laughs> Dude, I call it a win. There was tracks I could follow. <laughs> I followed those tracks. Always the downside of being your own cameraman. Uh, Matt got loaded up, did a really good job. Uh, really quick to pick things up. Takes instruction great, super inquisitive, and he's excited about learning this stuff. And uh, you, he's a guy, you don't have to tell him anything twice. You tell him it once, he gets it, he's got it and then just needs more experience from that point on. So I was doing too much instructing to be able to show and film and whatnot, but uh, little, did you see that beard levitation? We are, we're loaded and rolling. It's a little warm today. It's uh, surprisingly warm. Uh, we're good, we're loaded up. My phone battery died, sorry I didn't get any loading footage of uh, us getting going. But uh, gotta keep the phone alive, right? Take phone calls and business and whatnot. So anyhow, we're rolling. Matt's up there just getting in his truck. And uh, again, just pleasantly surprised. I don't wanna say surprised, cause I know Matt, we've been friends a long time and he's very capable and you know, just run his own business and has his own thing going. But in the cow world, I've trained so over the years, so, so many cattle trucks. It's just very rare to find somebody that you just tell them the thing and the thing happens. And they don't ask again and again and again. You're like, huh. Like I tell him my secret formulas and stuff of how I decide how many to load in what compartment. And he's just like, okay, yeah, I got it. And then I test him with some numbers and he's like, yep, do this, 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 this. And I'm like, very smart. Very good. <laughs> Here he is. 
We uh, we don't have monstrous loads on. We got 55,000 pounds net weight a piece. So that'll be about like Holton and I were last time. We're probably in the low 90s right now, roughly speaking. So we're gonna just mosey. You always want to just really poke along for the first while while these cattle get their sea legs under them and kind of get used to standing in motion. Ronan, Montana. We're out of here. Yeah, look at me with this headset on. Oh, baby. Uh, big dog's coming around. He's going to test out this new motor. Good. He's been patiently uh, staying back, hanging back, you know, first time with cattle on the road. And I said, you know, been down the road a few hours now. Don't be afraid to let a rib skip. His truck is geared pretty low, so his top speed is not great. But in most of Montana, you're fighting these long, either super short, steep grades or long, slow grades. And I said, I catch back up out in the flats, but... Don't let me hold you up. So there he went around. Uh, he just overhauled that motor. Best way to break in an engine is to uh, not treat it nicely. You want to keep your foot in it for for the first 10 or 15,000 miles for sure. So that's what he's doing. He looks good. Yep. That's the deal. Slow and steady. Ooh, slow and steady. No brakes. Remember, that's the goal on these mountain passes. No brakes coming down. Every once in a while, if you need to tap them a little, that's all right. But you don't want to end up that thing with a load of cattle on, I can tell you that. How's everything working? So far, so good. Yeah? Yeah. Let's we'll see how much... Uh... I might go broke after this trip. They have diesel fuel in this thing. Hey, did you figure your mileage yet? I haven't yet. I, need to look. <laughs> I figure it's it's not going to be very good. No, I mean you're breaking it in, yeah. so you know. Nice and shiny. Man, that looks good, doesn't it? All them hoses. Yes, sir. It's a sign of it's a sign of a very rich man right there. <laughs> All right, here's the dangers of cattle right there, y'all. That is not a spill of diesel. That is a spill from the rear end. Yep. So you gotta watch it. And you guys, so I fueled up here in Park City, Montana. I drove out to Ronan, Montana, loaded, came back, and just fueled up here again at the exact same, not only the same truck stop, but the same fuel island. Same fuel, nozzles, everything. 6.4 miles per gallon average. That's my empty out there loaded back. 6.44 to be exact. You guys, there's this little part of me that wants to tune this truck to give it a little more power. Just a little more. I'm just not quite where I want to be on the hill pulls. But the other side of me is like 6.44 with this trailer. On a windy day yesterday? I don't know. Maybe I should leave it all alone and just let it be. Because man alive, that is insane fuel mileage. All right, y'all, coming to you from the darkness. Made it to Bella Fouche. It is uh, 1.45 a.m. And, uh, Matt's doing great. He's uh, he's chipper. I tell you what, having your first cattle run be a 1,200 mile trip, <laughs> it's like welcome to the welcome to the world. That's uh, that'll make a man out of you. I know it's dark, but uh, anyway, we're gonna scoot on and keep a rolling. Cattle are riding good. They got a lot of room. We spread them out real nice. I did that. I can't remember if I mentioned it, but anticipating that. 
if Matt needs a little rest early tonight, uh, the cattle are so spread out and have so much room, it wouldn't be an issue to sleep for for a few hours if we need to. Yeah, looky there, boys. Got a little cab over right there, K100 Kenworth, bring it on down, boys. <laughs> oh man, out here just strolling. I tell you what, the worst, I feel like it's always the worst kind of, almost like a punch in the stomach, when you're cruising across the 90 out here. You cross from mountain time zone to central time zone. It's 4.30 a.m. You're out here just rocking and rolling, just keeping the drive alive. And then your phone says, oh wait, it's 5.30. And you're like, ah, ha, ha, what now? Come on. And then all of a sudden you start looking for that pullout. Let's take a snooze. Let's take a snooze. We're getting close. Got about five more miles. And we're gonna, we're gonna turn it in and uh, get some shut eye before that sun comes up. You know what I mean? You didn't get out, did you? No, I, I was like... <laughs> yesterday a little trick when you're backing up to these cattle chutes if the angle seems weird on the chute because you have to be real nice and square to go ahead and get a board out and just lay it out perpendicular to the chute looky there boys and girls he did her look at that boy get him Matty get him get him you're gonna break his hot shot <laughs> Student of the bull hauling game. Look 